Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, he's holding it. <laughs> God, it's so scary, Caleb. It's like a dead... It's like a dead animal. McDonald's has always existed under two primary continuums, as a fast food company that serves low-quality and low-cost food, and as a cloud of dreams that hand-delivers childhood wonder. Mickey D's has always tried to market itself to imaginative children with the creation of bright, colorful, and cheerful characters who could, well, advertise the food. While many of us look at McDonald's as something uh, cynical or crude or even disgusting, when we look back at how we viewed it as children, sometimes that image isn't the same. We think of the play places, the toys, the wholesome commercials. Hell, Ronald McDonald himself actually came to my elementary school and gave us an inspiring speech about saving the planet. And I know that as an adult I should look back on that and view it as nothing more than a capitalistic folly to try and trick me into becoming invested in a brand. But I just, I just can't look at it that way. Poor Ronald didn't mean anything by it, he just wanted our soda pop tabs. Now a few years back, someone told the guys at McDonald's that uh, kids are actually terrified of clowns, so they went ahead and replaced Ronald with this monstrosity. Guys, I think you just invented a new phobia. And I definitely have it. But the period of time where I grew up was arguably the second wave of Ronald Mania, which is why in the late 90s, McDonald's decided to begin releasing VHS tapes featuring animated adventures with the McDonald's Land cast. Full disclosure, as a kid, I loved these tapes. And my parents hated them. And now I'm an adult, and it turns out they were right the entire time. And squirrels. And fish. Frogs, and rocks. Of Every episode of The Wacky World of Ronald McDonald begins with a live-action segment of Ronald just sort of hanging out. Uh, think the Super Mario Brothers Super Show or Back to the Future the Animated Series. Hey, hey, Grimace, what's up? Ronald, it's the president. The terrorists have a nuke. <laughs> you will never believe it! What, Birdie? What the fuck is going on? Ronald then somehow introduces the animated segment. Sometimes he plays it, and other times he literally jumps into the adventure. Uh, this is eternal hell! The wacky world of Ronald McDonald has a pantheon of a cast. And when I say that, what I'm trying to say is, there are too many characters in this show. Alright, so there's Ronald, there's Birdie, there's Grimace. Pretty normal so far, right? Then there's Sunday the Talking Dog. Uh, there are three Chicken McNuggets that follow them around everywhere. You got a girl named Tika, a guy named 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 Franklin. You you've got these weird mop-headed fry creatures that also follow them around. Then the car is alive, and also the Hamburglar hangs out with them, which I don't get that. Why is he a part of the friends group if he's like a wanted criminal fugitive? Why is the Hamburglar part of the team? Hey, kids, did I tell you about that time that I stabbed the guy at the McDonald's? <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Burglar. <laughs> According to my research, they never sold any, like, toys for this show, so I don't know why they had to make sure to include characters like Franklin all the time. I get the feeling that the people who were making these films actually, unironically, had some sort of attachment or investment in the original McDonald's land commercial universe that had been running since the 1970s. There's a lot of little touches here and there that, that indicate that that was probably the case. So I guess they wanted to include characters like the Chicken McNuggets and the Mophead Fry Monsters because they were in the lore and they wanted to respect the commercials? Oh, it totally seems like a great idea to take a character that's meant to function under like 10 seconds of an advertisement and just putting them in a, in a 40 minute TV show that, that lasts over like 4 hours in total. This is basically supplementary material meant to get me invested in a universe of a series of commercials which are no longer on the air. Why did I watch this? <laughs> and expelled this bear to another dimension. <laughs> the plot of these specials are often extremely hard to follow. Okay, so some of the episodes are really dumb and child-friendly and easy to comprehend, and then some of them have, like, Shakespearean twists that I don't even get. Ah, oh, Ronald and the gang go camping, they get chased by a bear, it starts raining, they hide in the house, apparently there's a ghost, and they start getting dropped into the floor. And then it turns out that everyone who fell into the trap door was behind it the whole time? And then this wiry scientist runs in and starts ranting about 
virtual reality projectors? I don't know how many times I've told my son not to reprogram the virtual reality projectors. I don't know what's happening. Two words! You win! Okay, okay, you win! Hey, we made a new friend! So, you're saying that you're mad that they forgave the- they forgave the kids? Absolutely! It's bullshit! <laughs> You think they should? You think Rod they should? Ronald's like, oh, hey, we made a new friend. Fuck you. <laughs> he said that I win. That's what really matters. That I won. <laughs> Fuck you, Ronald. The storylines in these specials are often so unbalanced and random that they start feeling like lucid dreams. You have a scene where Ronald and the gang have all been turned into babies. They get chased to a cliff. Grimace pulls out Pepper. Ronald blows that into the air, making a sentient cloud sneeze causing it to rain, and now there's a shrubbery maze? I guess the team that made these specials also made Rugrats, and they just wanted to stick to their guns. Every episode of The Wacky Adventures of Ronald McDonald features three to five songs, and it becomes pretty quickly evident that these songs have been included A, because they take up time, and B, because the repeated verses means that you can repeat animation without anyone really caring. At best, these songs are derivative. There's nothing like the great outdoors and the far-flung forest is the best, of course. If you want to get close to the greenery, then camping in the wild is the place to be. Do you need a break from modern living? And at worst, they are the actual worst music of all time. Getting even cooler, step into a new beat. Got a tingling inside me and it's spreading to my feet. Come on, everyone! We never know, no, 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 what's around the bend. Can, can, get loose right that way. Go, go, round, you're not most. Time to set, 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 set up camp. Set, 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 fire to your wife's house. <laughs> you really have to feel bad for the parents of the kids who own these tapes. Because sitting through these once was a really draining experience. If you have a kid that, like, watches these tapes over and over again to the extent that you're potentially watching these dozens of times a week, it, it's gonna make childbirth seem tranquil. I talked to a couple friends about these tapes, and I came to the conclusion that most of us had nightmares because we watched these. That's partially because the animation studio that worked on this TV series was incapable of creating character designs that were not ghastly and disgusting. Her lips, fun fact, bottom of the chin. However, the worst part of the show has to be the live-action version of Sunday. Adulthood Trauma Part 2, anybody? I do not understand how anyone could look at this and in good faith say to themselves, let us give this to children. Why the dog? I don't understand at all. McDonald's Land or whatever, it has those iconic characters. It's got Grimace, it's got the bird lady. Then it's got Herpes Mouth Dog. <laughs> <laughs> don't you remind me your favorite character? <laughs> there are some parts of these specials which have aged really, really badly. Like there's this one scene in episode two where Grimace is describing how his ancestors were attacked. Oh no! It was a different time. Pocahontas had just come out, Mulan was around the corner. Another character in this series that puts me on edge is the Hamburglar. He has this shrill, obnoxious, screaming voice. It's also Cow from Cow and Chicken, and uh, yeah, I hate it. Don't listen to that guy, he's jealous. Steal! No! Yeah. What? Rana! Of all the characters in this series, the one that stands out the least is Ronald. Ronald McDonald was always sort of like the fast food Santa Claus to me. So to suddenly turn around and find out that this whole time he was just like a guy in a yellow tracksuit. It's really surprising, I guess. And he's not even like doing a bit or anything. He's just like a regular guy who's dressed up like a clown. His only characteristic is that he's vaguely nice. Come on, Hamburglar. Go easy on me, huh? You come on, Hamburglar. Hamburglar? <laughs> <laughs> 
What? Are you okay? Do you need a minute to compose yourself? <laughs> Come on, hamburger. <laughs> you... I don't give a shit, bro. <laughs> what, are you, what are you trying to get out? Are you okay? You look fucking insane. I'm just thinking the fucking come on, hamburger. <laughs> it's not that funny. It's pretty funny. Come on, hamburger. I, yes. I'm gonna die. <laughs> These specials are mainly just mindless nonsense without any stakes or driving force, and it's hard to make commentary or comedy out of something like that. I think that shows like Spongebob, The Fairly Odd Parents, and Hey Arnold, which can be enjoyed basically at any age, have made us forget that underachieving milk toast shows have always existed. Arguably, they were kind of worse when I was a kid. It's sort of fascinating to me that McDonald's was able to get their audience invested emotionally in the things that they were using to advertise their company. I can't think of a specific example of something like this happening with any other commercial icons. I mean, I never would have watched a Geico Gecko show or a Kool-Aid Man movie. What about Ronald McDonald made him a character that people appreciated as a regular figure of pop culture outside of the restaurant that he was advertising? What about McDonald's Land made it something that people would watch on a standalone basis when they weren't being advertised to? These are tough questions, and arguably, because the ad campaign is dead now, we'll never really figure that magic out. Uh, that is, unless Happy can somehow live up to the legacy of his ancestors. What was that about? <laughs> I don't know. 